Hello and welcome to a new episode of Other Record Labels. I'm your host, Scott Orr, where we talk about the art and culture of running an indie record label. Thanks so much for watching and for listening and for following along with the podcast. Today, I want to talk about the most basic thing, the most exciting thing, and actually the thing that I hear the most from people who DM me on Instagram at Other Record Labels or people who email me and they talk, which you can do, by the way, podcast at otherrecordlabels.com. Um, but people are messaging me all the time about saying that they are inspired after listening to the great labels that we talk with. They're inspired to finally um, jump, take the leap of faith and start their own record label. So today I want to talk about the really basics of how to start a record label, but not not the actual like practical little like how do you register this how do you buy this domain how do you pick a name blah 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 that's not what i want to talk about today i want to talk about more of the bigger picture uh philosophical things that i think are important and i think that if you are in the early stages of dreaming up a record label then you have an advantage of starting off right using the wisdom from all of the awesome labels that we've talked to. And this is really a spinoff of a uh, one of my favorite episodes with Oof Records, which, by the way, is such a great name. It's it's our our orbit of friends. It's an acronym. But but uh, I had a great chat um, and and with this label and 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 talking about their beginnings, which happened during covid, by the way, which sucks. But anyhow, they're making the best of it. And it really inspired um it inspired me and, and and I know that it inspired our listeners because I get these emails all the time of people saying, um, I have always been thinking about running a record label or I'm a DIY artist and now I want to take the leap and join up with my friends and create a collective and create a label. So today I want to kind of celebrate that thought and talk about um, four things that I think you should keep in the back of your mind or the front of your mind when you're starting a record label. And these are more big picture philosophical things. Um, if you want some some help in starting a label on a more practical uh, checklist type of thing, well, then I actually have something for you. I have a checklist on how to start a record label. It's all the things I think you need to, not all the things, but a lot of the things I think you need to keep in mind when you're starting a record label. You can get that in a checklist form, believe it or not, at otherrecordlabels.com slash checklist. So go and download that. Um, and if you are one of the incredible people who are dreaming of starting a record label or who have just started a record label this year or last year, then make sure you get that checklist, otherrecordlabels.com slash checklist. Um, it, it's so inspiring. And we talked about this in the OOF episode um, and uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago. And um, what I think is so cool about it is there's a very good chance, uh, or maybe not a good chance, but there is a chance that um, that record label will be one of the, the iconic labels that we refer to in indie music in, in 10 years from now or 20 years or 30 years, like a Sub Pop or a Kill Rock Stars or a Merge, you know. And so I think what's so cool is even when I talk with great labels like Secretly and, and Jag Jaguar or Sub Pop, there was a beginning there. There was a story where, where there was a beginning. And so I think it's so great that these great labels that are just starting up have the potential of becoming one of these big labels. Um, so let's get into it. Number one, go slow. That is a, that is a huge thing. We all get this, like, uh, there's an author who, who refers to it as the entrepreneurial seizure. And it's like, you get this idea and then all of a sudden you register a domain and you do everything super quickly. And that's really where you make mistakes. When I look back, I think about those type of things where me and my friends just wanted to get this off the ground as soup, as quick as possible. We literally signed anyone who could play guitar or piano and, and we just went as quick as possible. I made a logo in five minutes. I picked the name I already had. Um, and so, you know what I mean? Like there was, I don't have a ton of regrets, but I do have some. And so I think it's really important to go slow. I've said this before on other episodes, but you can use your friends or yourself as guinea pig bands instead of going out there and, and um, finding a, a, a strangers band and, and working with them off the top. I mean, that can work, but, uh, it's, I think it's better when you can use friends who are a little bit more, uh, uh, gracious to you, um, and spend a lot of time ironing out the details and doing your research and your homework and talking to people before you launch the label. So that's the first thing is go slow. And I know a lot of labels, do that. Even when we talked to Oof, it was something that was slowly brewing over months. And then there was a great show that they did and it went really well for them. And then they, they, they started to put together the label. The second thing is to be strategic and systematic. What do I mean by that? I mean that 
right from the beginning, and we talked about this, or we are going to talk about this in a future episode, um, but uh, we to to create systems and 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 spreadsheets and ways of doing things that are sustainable if your label hopefully goes on five and 10 years and ways to be more transparent with the artists, um, ways to keep everything organized. I mean, you remember when we were talking um, with Ava about how uh, they have this like Dropbox of all their organized folders and stuff. I'm so jealous of that. And it becomes so difficult 10 years into running a label to go back and find all of those press photos and those one sheets and those MP3s and the wave files and put them in a folder for each release and keep it all organized. I, I used to have, I, I, Later on, I made a spreadsheet of our catalog numbers, but in order to find out a catalog number, I would like have to go to our server, find, download a bunch of zips, open up the zip, find the, the MP3s inside to discover, oh, okay, so the catalog number for that album three years ago was XYZ. And that was such a terrible model. So I want to say right from the beginning, um, use checklists to help you stay on task, um, it create a template in a folder and then duplicate that for every new release. Keep your files and all your accounting organized right from the beginning. Say, I'm going to create a strategy and maybe even a manual so that when more people come on to help out, they're not dependent on my brain to keep things organized. That's the second thing. The third thing is super important and it's what you're doing right now. And that's get help, get help from other record labels. I think it's great. You're listening to this podcast because just like me, I'm getting so much wisdom from these labels who have been doing it for so many years. And even my goodness, last week's episode where a label that's been around for a couple months had so many great ideas. And so, and you know, remember uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked to Grimalkin records and they have this like system where before they sign a new artist, they talk to all the existing artists and let them speak to that and, and kind of have their say on the A&R aspect of things. What a great system. I had never thought of that. So I am learning through these interviews with these labels and learning so much from these these other labels. And I encourage you to absorb as much information as you can and even taking it a step further and emailing some of these labels that we've had on the show or labels that you admire or even just, you know, um, DIY artists who run their own career, but emailing these people and asking them questions. And I, I bet you they'll get back to you. I mean, they most of them get back to me. So I bet you they'll get back to you. Um, and I think that's really important to ask advice um, that can go a long way. The final thing, and it takes me back to something that we talked about with Jesse Frick of Father Daughter Records about two years ago now, maybe, yeah, it's like two years ago almost. And she talked about the impact that a thank you letter had on, and I think this is in our free guide, by the way, which you can get at otherrecordlabels.com. But she talked about the impact of a thank you letter. And so the final tip that I'll give is to be kind. This can go, this can have such an impact uh, in a month from now and in from 10 years from now. But when a blog writes about your release and, you know, a, a, a release from a new label, from a brand new artist, and they take the time to write about that, send them a thank you note, send it long time after the campaign and say, when you have nothing to pitch to them and just say, Hey, Remember when you did this? Thank you so much for doing that. It means a lot. Send thank you notes to the artists on your label for entrusting you with their projects. Everyone, maybe you had a great experience with a sound person one night at a show. Send them an email the next day and say, wow, I've never had, I, like, I've never had a great experience with a sound person. We all, I mean, that's, that's rare. You've never had that experience. So you would never send that email. I'm joking. But send these emails to people as thank you notes. You can even send like a handwritten thank you note. You know, how how weird would that be? Um, but I, I think that can really go a long way. And again, like I said at the beginning, if you're looking for actual practical step-by-step hand-holding, starting a record label, today I want to talk about these big philosophical things. But I think these are more important than uh, wh what name you give your record label or what your logo looks like or what web provider you have stuff like being kind it can go such a long way and and the labels that i've talked to and i've talked to probably 30 or 40 labels at this point i'm so amazed at how humble and how incredible these people are and how generous they are with their time and with their wisdom and and i hope that can be you as well speaking of generosity under the banner of being kind it's important to be generous 
with, to our artists. And, you know, there's a lot of times where you can have some uncomfortable conversations about money with artists. And I like to be always error on the side of being generous. Um, if somebody is going to get screwed in a transaction, I would much rather it be me than me being the one who's doing the screwing. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and I, like you might disagree with that, but to me, I just want to make sure that I am like avoiding conflict or avoiding ever doing anything wrong financially in that way. And I just think I would much rather be generous whenever I can. And I'm not, this is not me like patting myself on the back. I'm literally just doing this as insurance. I just don't like having conflict. And I think there are so many times where you can be generous. And I've talked with labels who, uh, like really small labels who give all of their time. They give services of being a, a PR person to their artists. They, they do show bookings for them, even though when that's not even a, a generally a labels thing, they act as their manager. They manage their time for them. They act as their their personal accountant. Um, and they drive them places to pick up gear. They go to their shows. Um, I think there's so many things like that. That's really important for a label owner in, in being generous with your time and with your wisdom and with your hands and your feet. Um, uh, and then finally work on building up your community of artists and serving the existing arts community in your local area. I think it's the community. We talked about this with so many labels recently, the community is so important and building and fostering that community of your artists and of all the people who donate to your artists and your fans are even in that community. Um, part of being kind is is working within that community, supporting that community, and not building this closed group that's closed off from the rest of the area, but but also to kind of integrating in with, with the arts community that already exists in your area, if there is one, and to serving that community. I think that can go a long way. These are big philosophical things. If you disagree with me, that's okay. You probably have things that are more important to you. And if that's the case, share them with me. You can leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you're listening to this as a podcast, then email me at podcast at other record labels.com and say, I disagree with this, or you missed one and I'll share it with the group. I, I totally, I'm, I'm totally open to that, but I have just been so encouraged from the people who have reached out to us saying, um, I'm now going to start a record label because I've been inspired by the people you've had on the show. I get that. I'm telling you, I get that once a week. Usually it's two or three times a week. And so it's so exciting to hear some of these small and big labels who are inspiring new labels. And I hope that continues. So um, best of luck to you. If you are starting a record label, I hope you found this helpful. Go to our website, otherrecordlabels.com slash checklist to download a checklist of a little bit more tangible and practical things. Um, but I hope that you found this helpful. If you've been running your label for five years or 10 years, I hope you also have found this helpful because these are things that we can start to implement um, right away. It might be harder um, than if we were starting from scratch, but it's something that we can implement uh, right away. Thanks so much.